Hello and welcome to uh, today's session on Excel tips, tricks, and techniques. We're going to be going over creating rack elevations from a server inventory list in Excel. So, you know, we'll go over why is it we're doing this. The purpose for creating rack elevations is so we can get a visual representation of our data, which is in a list format within Excel, but at least show it from a side-by-side -side rack view and row view. And then um, as an expected result, we want to see a picture of that. So not only would we just see the list, we actually see a visual representation so we know how much room we have left in a rack, um, how many you are taking up in that rack. And then there are some assumptions that we're going to go through. And on the assumption side, in order for this to work, you have to be consistent with your data. So the list and the columns of how you're tracking your inventory need to be consistent and need to be thinking about some of the naming conventions on sorting and how things work, as well as if the information is not accurate, then garbage in, garbage out. Okay, so um, in order to do this, we're going to be using certain functions. Our key function that we'll use is VLOOKUP. So that gives us a, um, a list lookup of things in another table and it will return a value based on the value of what we have in that list and then concatenate from a formatting perspective as well as is NA so we check and validate whether um, any reference or something that's coming back as a not found we can make it not show that pound sign ref or unfound number so we can actually show that that's not going to be representing our visual representation poorly we'll also look at multiple sheet reference so we're going to be using VLOOKUP to look at sheets and other tabs as well as pivot tables we're going to show a um, view of this from a pivot table point of view you can show rack elevations just by using pivot tables but it does not show you side by side racks okay so now let's go ahead and look at our our hands-on sample okay so let's go ahead and get into the actual elevations that we're going to create with Excel so what I like to do in general is if we look at um, a standard result so I look at what do we want to get out of this how are we going to create this so I'll either whiteboard this or, or come up with where, what is the mindset of what we're going to produce. So in, in that process, I know that I know I have uh, rack units going from the height of the rack all the way down to number one on the left-hand side. And then I have my racks within a row. So I have my first rack, second rack, third rack, and so on. And the next thing I've done is I've created a um, RU number. So what is the height of the device that would be in this rack? So we're going to show the device that sits in this particular position in the rack. And that rack is based upon a certain location. So I'm in a building. I am on a floor in a room. And I'm on a particular row. I'm either on the front side of the rack or the back side of the rack. So these, these are some what I call keys. So the combination of all four of these items plus the U that is sitting in the rack will decide what device lives there. And that's how I have to display so that helps me understand, well, what is it that I'm going to uh, show there and what formulas do I need to use? So if I go back to my devices, this is all the devices that, that I have in my uh, inventory. So knowing that, that I need the key information that's about the building location, it's about the um, floor and the room, the row, the front or back of the rack, I know that those are columns that I'm going to track. That's information that I'm going to track. I've created a, a first column here that will concatenate that same information in my columns into one row. So this becomes my key. Everything that I search for on the other rack is going to basically search on this column. And then the result will be whatever the column number I want. That's part of the VLOOKUP function. Okay, so I want to go to my elevations. And instead of doing the um, back, every one of these cells is doing a lookup, combining the, that information, which is the, the building, the room, the row, the rack, the front or the back, as well as the U, finding it in that full list of items, returning the name and the device height. So we can see that it's found you know, sparsity of devices in this back side. But if I look in the front side, obviously it's, there are many more devices. Okay, but it's, it's basically, it's purely data driven. It's filtering based off of building out that key value. I can change the building. I can change the floor. So when I change the building, it doesn't have the same room and floor, right? So if I go back to building two, I'm sorry, yeah, location two, building four. And let's say I'm going to change instead of row A, we're going to go to row C. Things change quite a bit. And if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that 
you know, they, they all go to rack 11, but there's different availability. So this gives me a quick visual, and this is the power of doing this in Excel. I'm not necessarily in my decent product or whatever that end result might be. I can do some future state uh, playing around with devices without actually having to input them into anything. So it just gives me a quick view based on an inventory list that I have of all my devices. Okay, so this is the device list that we, we created. Uh, the, now we get into why it's important to have consistent data. So as you're going through here, your device name will be whatever the device name is, your standards. So you have a standard for that. The building can be a data center name. It might be a building number. It, you might have multiple columns for this, which is fine. If you do that, you just need to make sure you're concatenating multiple fields, and then you do the same thing on your lookups. right? You just have additional lookups here, and then when you drill down to how do I find that device if you look up the top here that's a pretty big formula and I'll drop this down so you can see how, how large this formula is when I highlight it you can see the items that are included in the formula the cells that are included in formula. so obviously the things I'm looking for that are concatenated for me well I'm using that same concatenate function in the formula itself so that allows me and I, as I'm seeing this right here I could actually improve upon speed and space if I were to go ahead and just concatenate that here to this cell and then always look at this cell instead of having to do that within the formula up there which means that my spreadsheets gonna be a smaller size once I save it it's always constant improvement so you can always uh, implement that if you actually do this on your own okay so back to the the formula itself what this does is it's basically doing a VLOOKUP regardless of what the concatenate does it says look up the location that I am saying that I want to see plus the current RU value of this particular rack in my all devices find that item and return the device name and it does the same thing for the device height that's really what this function is doing now the key is if you want to look at for the lookup I want to look up whatever that value is which is the the concatenation of these four items plus this RU location right and it's going to look it up in this table which is basically my first table in my all devices tab and it's going to return the 14th column okay so the 14th column will get returned and then it does it again the the second VLOOKUP because this first VLOOKUP is done as a subset of the is NA function so that says that okay go ahead and do the VLOOKUP tell me if something is found or not if nothing is found then just return a space. I don't want a, 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 pound, a pound sign ref or a hashtag uh, response here. I want it to just be blank so my visual looks better. So if for some reason it comes back and it, it did find it, then it redoes the same lookup and returns the value that is in the 14th column. Okay, so we'll, let's look at that physically. So it finds that same item here. It's the concatenation of all those values. It found it here. If it returned true, then it's going to return, this is the third column, which is the device name, and the 14th column is going to be the RU number, right here. So this is the 14th column. So keep that in mind as you're using VLOOKUP. It's saying look up a value into a table and return the X number of columns of that table. And you, you, we're doing it twice. We're doing it once for the number three. This guy's doing it in the third. And then this guy's doing it in the 14th and that's really basically how we build rack elevations using the data that we have from a list right here now I, I mentioned earlier that you can do this with pivot tables so if you create a pivot table and we're using pivot tables throughout here so we have stats that show us number of um, power connections number of copper cables uh, fiber cables as long as your device has all that column information it will roll that up at a standard level whether it's the room whether it's the building a location a data center um, down to the rack that it lives in all the way down to the appliance itself right or by the type of appliance and you control this with your pivot tables so if I were to do a an elevation that was using pivot tables I don't have the niceness of seeing the whole row at once side by side but I can on an individual basis uh, vertically show all of the items that are as this example shows location 2 building 4 room 10-101 row A the back side and the front side if I were to expand this my front side has 176 devices okay I also know the number of cables that go to that the front side of that row there's 45 and the 172 U in that 
particular area. If I drop down to something that has quite a bit more, so let's go for, actually 176 is the highest amount. This is down to the rack. So on the front side of that row, I have rack 1 through 11. And this is, again, the numbers. So as an example, my rack 1 has 16 devices in it. It takes up a total of 15U out of my 42U total. Right, so I know they're not taking it up. So if I want to see what those devices are, you notice this counts down so I can see this is representative of the height and how I would look at it in the rack. However, I don't see the separation between the devices and I don't see um, if there are any items within those. One big plus you have to this is if there are duplicates. So we, we had mentioned before, like this color, um, I've got a uh, conditional format that will show duplicates in here. Um, I also created an extra column that would count the number of times I see those duplicates. Now, elevations, in theory, you shouldn't have that. However, because we're tracking at a specific U, if you have blades, as an example, in a rack, and they're in an enclosure, well, the enclosure is actually taking up the space. The blades live within the enclosure. So in that scenario, you'll see something with like 16. Yeah, so these are 16 blades that live within the same enclosure. The enclosure in and of itself is the one that will be the device name that shows up on my elevations. These guys will not show up on the elevations because these are mostly 16.1 or whatever the rack elevation is. It'll be 0.1, 2, or 3, and they have no height in their device, right? They're not taking up any U. The enclosure itself is taking up that U. So if we go back to here, this gives us a visual representation of that individual rack if I were to expand that whole row, obviously we've got to scroll up and down. So it's not as nice as the elevations that we see side by side. However, it is very functional for us to be able to see that information. And we can see number of power supplies, all kinds of different things that pivot tables allow us to do. All right. So um, the other key that is important for this is this is basically data driven. So within this one sheet, we're always dependent upon what information is in here. And you'll notice I have drop down lists. Um, that's important to make sure that I don't mistype information and, and I'm not able to find information in the other sheet. So this drop down list is actually a uh, a format that we can see based upon each of the columns. So I have a lookup table that drives to each of the different building locations uh, as well as the owners of the devices and the rooms that they can be in and models. So whenever I add a device it's going to have to follow within these as well as from my reporting point of view I can pick from those same lists. That just gives you me consistency, make sure I'm not accidentally overwriting or putting the wrong information and missing something. But since it is data driven, it, it, it does calculate it's accurate as accurate as my information is in my lists. Okay. Well that brings us to a conclusion for our creating rack elevations using Excel. Please feel free to share, comment, and hopefully like this presentation of Excel tips, tricks, and techniques. Until next time.